Hello, Paul Hamilton here from UTB. We're going to convert Minecraft Worlds into AR on iPad. Let's get started. We're going to click on Minecraft Education Edition, and I'm going to find a good model that we can use and view in augmented reality on our iPad. So I'm going to go to the subject kits and maybe go to history. I think thinking about this as AR, being able to walk through one of these constructions is going to be super cool. So let's go with the Chinese Tang Dynasty uh, by John Miller. This is going to be super cool. So we're going to jump into that world and we're going to create world. And what we're going to do is lay a structured block. We're going to export it as a 3D model and view it in augmented reality. This is going to be super cool. We're going to do all this on an iPad, by the way. No Macs, no trying to open it on another device. Oh, here we go. This is a beautiful world. So let's go for a bit of a walk. So I want you to imagine that in augmented reality, we're going to be able to bring this out onto the playground or oval and be able to walk through this world. We're going to do it all on an iPad and we're going to use the correct file format so that we can maybe add an extra couple of flavors to this in reality composer, which is an augmented reality application. So let's jump. Okay, this is looking about good. We've gone for a, enough of a walk. Let's jump here. And let's go to our building blocks and see if we can find the structured block. So let's go here. I'm going to click on here, my three dots on iPad. I'll go to my search and let's have a look for the structured block. It's an, it's an unusual looking one. You'll be able to see it. It's kind of purpley. There it is there on the right hand side. Um, so you might be saying, well, Paul, what if it's not there? What if I click that and I can't actually add it? So what I want you to do is to stop your world and go to your settings and double check a couple of things for me. Make sure that you're in creative mode. So if you're not, you're not going to be able to kind of place that block and export it. And I normally turn on my coordinates so it shows my coordinates in the world. Not essential, but definitely the creative mode is. We want to be able to find that structured block and place it in our world. So let's go back and keep playing. So I'm going to grab that structured block. So I'll go down and search for it again. I don't think I've got it yet. Oh, by the way, there's my position, my coordinates. Super handy. Um, let's grab that one. And let's just place it directly in front of us. We could dig a hole and place it there, but we're not going to go into too much depth. Uh, I want you guys to be able to do that. So let's just place it right there. And what you'll find is when you place it there, you'll get these uh, green, red, and blue points. And what that is, is this structured block. So if I tap on the structured block, I get my X, Y, and Z. Now, X and Z are kind of my length and my width, if you like. And my Y is my kind of depth or my altitude that goes up. So you can see here, I've made X and Y 64 by 64, and it grabs most of my model, which is cool. Um, I'm going to add a height because I want to make sure that I capture those blocks. I'll make it 32. That could be a little bit too much, but that's okay. It's just vacant air. Might make that a little bit smaller. I can play around with the offset, but for now, we're just going to go with X, Y, and Z. And you can see those colors, red, green, and blue on the model. So you can kind of have a play around with it. You want to make sure that you've got most of the model that you want to capture. And then we're going to click export down the bottom. It's as simple as that. Oh, by the way, Y going down negative is going to let me look at the depth. So at the moment, that's zero. If I make it too much, I'm going to have a lot of empty blocks underneath it. And I actually want to walk through this augmented reality. That's probably too much. I want it nice and flat on the ground so that I can place it um, in a nice open area and walk through it in AR. So I'm going to go with maybe just minus one at the moment or negative one. So I'm going to export that when I'm finished. Don't need to do anything else. I don't want to remove the blocks, then I won't have anything. So I'm going to export there, and it's going to generate my 3D model. So I can save that to files directly, and I can rename it. This is really important. Give it a name that you can recognize, and it's going to create a GLB format. So the GLB B format's not great for iPad. It's not going to register it, but I've got a little trick. I've got an awesome tool up my sleeve for you. So I'm going to press save. I'm going to make sure it's on my iPad, not in iCloud Drive. Sometimes that can be an issue. So I'm going to save it on my iPad, in my files, and I am done. That's me exported my 3D model beautifully now available on my iPad in my files. I'm going to go to Safari. I don't need to jump into any other app. And I'm going to go to this conversion tool. Now you can see it at the top. I've got that there for you. If you want to search for it, it converts GLB files to USDZ files for iPad and AR view 
quick view beautifully all on an online converter. So I'm going to press in a minute, choose file. And I'm going to select that file that I just saved. It's going to be in my files. And I'm going to look for it. Now, a little bit of a tip from me, go back to browse. If you can't find it, go to recent and it might pop up or go down to on my iPad where you stored it and it might pop up there. See how if you can't find it and you're not sure, just go back to browse. Sometimes it takes a minute or two to come through. Now I can see that 3D model Minecraft, the GLB format. So keep jumping between those two to make sure that you find it. And we need to convert it to a USDZ. So once again, we'll click on choose file. We will go back to browse at the top left-hand corner and we'll find the one that we saved it to, which in this case is 3D model Minecraft. We click on that and it will start converting beautifully. You can see there I've got a beautiful preview of my model. That's looking super cool. And it's going to download it up into the top right-hand corner where my downloads go on Safari. See at the top right-hand corner there? That's where it's going to go. And that will be ready to view in augmented reality on my iPad. That's all I need to do. So it's going to convert that. Oh, sorry. It's going to go to, it's going to give me a QR code so I could view it in AR straight away or I could download it. So I'm actually going to download that USDZ file, but I could use that QR code just to view it in AR. I'm going to download it and it's going to go up into my downloads on Safari. There it goes there. It's about five meg, not too big. It's going to be massive, by the way. It's going to be really huge, but we can actually scale it down a little bit. So there it is there, ready to be viewed in augmented reality. So if I click on that downloaded file, um, I won't view it in AR now. I'll just go to the object. So I can view it in AR at the top or just as an object, but um, I'm not going to convert it to AR at the moment because um, I'm doing this tutorial. But the top right-hand corner is the most important little menu. I'm going to save that to files now. So this is now my AR compatible 3D Minecraft model that I can do so much with on an iPad. That GLB format's not going to do much for me. So I'm going to save that. And now it's sitting in my files as a USDZ format, beautiful and ready to go. So what can we do with that? Oh, what can't we do with it, everyone? We're going to jump into Reality Composer, our favorite augmented reality app that is free, made by Apple. We're going to create a new project. And now we can, oh, let's choose a horizontal surface because we're going to layer it um, on a table or in our backyard. Let's go horizontal. And now we can bring our model into Reality Composer. I'm going to go to Plus. Now we've got lots of 3D models. If you haven't seen these before, have a look at Reality Composer. It is an amazing app for iPad. We're doing a lot of training in it at the moment. So give us a yell if you need a hand. We're going to go to Imported. It's going to go to our files. There it is there, Minecraft World as USDZ. Or Z. Uh, we're going to click on that. And we're going to bring that into Reality Composer, not as a GLB, because it won't come in here, but as a USDZ. So I'm going to click on that once, or tap on it, sorry. And what we need to do, just as a pre-warning, when it comes in, it might not look like it's there, but if I zoom out, two-finger pinch, if I zoom out, it is massive. Look how big it is. It's huge. So a little tip from me, tap on your model, and then in your Properties panel, Go down to your reset. So reset it in the center of your Reality Composer world and then scale it down. So what we can do there is scale it to the right size. We can drag our green, red, and blue cones to position our world, or sorry, our Minecraft world around. We can keep zooming in there. But one thing that's really important, the reason why I'm scaling it down to about 12% or less is because each of these squares is one meter by one meter. I'll zoom in a minute and show you. See these squares down the bottom here? They're one by one meter, and the little cubes are 10 centimeters. So what you want to do is make sure that your world is the size that it's going to fit in the space that you're going to place it. So tap on it once, scale it, click on your properties and scale it, 
and we can do some amazing things with it now. So instead of just viewing it in AR, we could do some really cool stuff. We could bring in any of these 3D models here and actually add to our Minecraft world with some other 3D models. We could bring in some imported models from other areas, or we could click on our behaviors tool here and we can add some triggers like proximity triggers, tap behaviors. And what we can do is actually make this scene interactive with augmented reality. So if I have a tap behavior, when I tap on the world, it could give me a move, an animation, it could add force, I could have something that orbits, but probably my favorite is the students can have add their voice. So they could add little audio tours of what their Minecraft world is, and it could be attached to the world or it could be ambient sound, a whole lot of different things. At the end, we can export here as a reality file so that people with Apple devices can view it. And not only are they viewing the Minecraft world, but they're viewing the audio, the animations and everything that goes with my Minecraft world here. So there's so many cool things that we can do. Um, don't forget too, we could actually import some things from other sites. So here I've got a little sphere that I've actually inserted that's part of the Reality Composer library. And so I can actually bring that in and I could do something like add a tap behavior there that gives an audio. I could put it on special things. I could import other models. So I've got some great 3D models here. I think I got this Mars planet. I got a planet from the NASA site. This is the Mars 3D model that's got beautiful textures. I might do some storytelling or I might be able to bring in some sort of scene here and I can bring in 3D models into Reality Composer and start composing, start creating an AR scene that's gonna blow your socks off. So we can start to do those things in Reality Composer once we've got our Minecraft world in an acceptable compatible file format. I could bring in, what else could I bring in just to show you a couple of things here? Um, I think I've got a Star Wars model there. So if I search up the top, I think from Sketchfab, I got the Millennium Falcon, Millennium Falcon there. So I might be able to bring that in. I could definitely animate that. I could have it orbiting the world. I could have it going through my Minecraft world. I could have 3D character characters that are walking through my world with student narration over the top. There's so much we can do in Reality Composer once we've got our Minecraft world into that USDZ format, which is going to be super, super cool going through. So we wanted to show you that today. We wanted to show you that online converter. I, I'll put it in the comments. Um, if you didn't capture it in the screen recording itself, um, you can see here how many different actions and animations and tap behaviors and making things interactive we can do in Reality Composer. But you might just want to actually view your Minecraft model in AR. And you can do that by using that online converter, which is going to be super cool. Paul Hamilton here from UTB.